Hello, I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're again listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I know you watched all the shows, so you know that we just did the Pacific Division prediction, standings predictions, last video. Today we're going to be doing the Atlantic Division, and we did that on our live stream. I'm sure all of you were there to listen to it, right? Of course, at the live stream that happens five days a week uh, during the week from three to whenever I feel like it, whenever I feel like it o'clock, that's what I'll call it from now on, three to whenever I feel like it o'clock, three Eastern, one Mountain till whenever I feel like it. Uh, we do a show there and you can you can make these selections and all that fine frolic. Um, in the Pacific Division, I had a request. I had a request from uh, Liana Rantawowicz from who's part Slovakia that I tell what all of the picks are before I do the long version. So I'm going to give you the short version now because you guys are busy beavers. Apparently you got things to do. I don't know how you could have more important things to do than watch this broadcast, but apparently there's people out there. Maybe you got to have a nap. Naps are more important. That would be something. So uh, here we go. I'm going to tell you what position that we put each one in. And uh, then when you watch the broadcast, you can see my personal picks, but this was the community picks. So you can hear them, feel satisfied and go on through your day. All right, here we go. Buffalo Sabres, eighth. Ottawa Senators, seventh. Montreal Canadiens, sixth. Detroit Wet Red Wings, five. Leafs, fourth. Boston, third, Lightning, second, and Panthers, first. There you go. Now you can go off. But if you want to fear the real frolic, we're going to go tell you some stuff right now. Let me tell you. Oh, frolic is endless. See? Look. There will be frolic. Pearl of Wisdom Show. Check it out. There will be frolic. And Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like the all four, all four of the major sports and teams within those you will love steel flyers all sports network all right let's go all right buffalo sabers here we go okay yes the buffalo sabers was the last place team i really tried to think of a way that i wouldn't put them eighth I as well put them eighth. Uh, what do you do? Jeff Skinner is your top line left winger, right? Uh, Dylan Cousins, they have his number one. Having came in solid, apparently. Looking strong. But it's a lot to ask for a 20-year-old. I don't care how strong you are yet to go up against the Matthews of the world and guys like that. It's going to be a struggle. I think this team's going to be more competitive than people give them credit for there. I, I really love what Casey Middlestad did in uh, the second half uh, after uh, um, the Swede got fired. I don't know, for Kruger, Ralph Kruger got fired. Um, and uh, Granado came in. In fact, a lot of the players played a lot better with him. So... I don't really love the roster, but I do love the energy. I think this energy, the energy of this team is going to surprise some people. I I do. But as a whole, I just can't put them any. And I don't even think they really want to be like, they, are, they don't want to be any higher than like third, fourth worst in the league because they really need to get uh, some like Wright or maybe Bedard the year after. Um, and having Will Butcher and Mark Pissick in your 5-6 spot is well on your way to doing that. So as well is having Craig Anderson as your number one goaltender at 40 years old. And Aaron Dell is your backup as well. I Maybe, maybe, maybe they might be really going. I know they love, love, love uh, Lukanen. And uh, maybe he'll get a really good shot this year to give it to give it a go. He's going to be a little older, but too much greenery in this lineup. I can't see them being any better than eight. Buffalo fans, tell me what you think. How 
uh, from almost every Buffalo fan I've heard says the same thing. Uh, but there's one guy, I got to remember his name. He's, uh, he's, I, I really like his stuff. The guy's got an awesome opinion. I'll have his name here in a second or in my next one. Man, I wanted to shout him out. He's really good. Uh, but he had him fifth. That's kind of really optimistic. But all right, next. Uh, the Ottawa Senators. And actually, like I said in the beginning of this broadcast, I think I will. Uh, I would actually put – I actually had Montreal here. Community had Ottawa. I actually have Montreal here. I'm kind of changing that now to Detroit, though, when I found out that Varana is going to be out for four months. That I really thought Varana was going to crush it this year, and, and I think that's just a little too deflating for that lineup. But we'll get to that when we get to Detroit. Uh, but they got Ottawa. I understand the reason why they are still fairly thin. Uh, I think there's that negativity of Kachuk not being signed yet, but I'm sure he'll get signed here soon. You throw Kachuk in this top six, though, and it's not too bad. Uh, Stussel is going to be a year older. I think he could get something like 50 to 60 points. Uh, Josh Norris has been progressing well. I think he's a little overrated in Ottawa land, though. They, I heard, Let me put it this way. When they were talking about trading Eichel, they said they. In I talked to Ottawa fans, and they said they wouldn't trade Josh Norris straight across for Eichel. I know he has an injury, but he's going to come back from the injury. Eichel at seventy five percent is still better than Joshua Norris. Sorry, but it's true. I like him, but not that much. Uh, more of a second line guy. Drake Batherson, though, uh, I think he's going to rock it this year. It, they had a strong second half last year, and um, it makes it tempting to put them higher because they play with so much energy and work ethic. But part of that is Brady Kachuk being there. So did I say Matthew? Brady. I hope I didn't say Matthew in this. Brady Kachuk being there, and he's got to get back in this lineup. Alex Formington, forget about that. Nicholas Paul will be up there, anybody. Formington's not going to be an offensive player in the NHL. Um, Colin White needs to step it up, man. This is your year, dude. You got a chance to solidify a second-line center spot this year, or you may never see it again. Uh, love the pickup of Zachary Sanford, by the way, for uh, Brown, who wasn't panning out at all, being very lazy and not doing what he's supposed to do. Love Shane Pinto. Lots to like about the Ottawa Senators roster, but it is still very, very green. Shabbat, of course, is Shabbat. Zaitsev, not that great. Brandstrom, we'll have to see this year. Uh, he's getting better every year, though. I, I think he'll make a big step up this year. I like Artem Zub a lot. I think he'll be in the league in a, lot, a long time and might even progress up into a one, uh, to a two guy. I just... I love the way he skates, the way he moves the puck. He doesn't make many mistakes. Good good guy. Uh, that's why I had him a little higher. Nick Holden and, and Joshua Brown, they solidify a 5-6 spot. It's not bad. It's here that's the problem. Murray and Forsberg. Murray, Ottawa fan said he played better in the second half last year. He, okay, but he's got to play way better. Way better at, for the amount of money he's making. And on to Anton Forsberg, yeah, whatever. He's not going to be the guy that they are going to be playing. It's going to be Philip Ghost, Philip Gustafson. Then you got Bernard Docker, who could be ready right now. And Lassie Thompson, who's been knocking on the door for a while. So this team could surprise. I really think this team could surprise. But um, I had I had the Montreal Canadiens, and we'll talk about them in a bit as we go along here. Actually, we'll talk about them next. Montreal Canadiens are sixth to the community. I had them seventh. And are like, what do you mean? The team that made the finals and the playoffs last year, not going to make the playoffs and in seventh? Yeah, I'm afraid so. And um, it's just, I think, I think it was lightning in a bottle. Price got hot. Um, uh, Perry is an amazing leader when it comes to the playoffs, and he's not going to be there now. 
Um, and of course, you know, this, you, you, you know Montreal fans, the problems we have here. We have Weber out. Paul Byron is hurt again. Um, you lost Drew Ann and had to brought in Christian Dvorak, which I do agree with Montreal fans who say that they, Christian Dvorak makes them better now. But Kokaniemi really got used poorly in Montreal and I think is going to show up to be not as good as Dvorak, but in the long run, he's going to be better than Christian Dvorak. However, he does fill in a pretty good spot now. And I think Jonathan Drouin is going to have... I, I hope he has a great year. After going through... Uh, I, depression issues and stuff like that and, and found he, I want to see a big bounce back. I'm just rooting for him hardcore. Does that mean I put him, like I said, I put him in seventh, but that does not mean I don't think Geraint's going to have a strong year. And the fact that I put him in seventh, I'm very, I'm not, it's not because of their top six. Caulfield, Suzuki, and Toffoli, I think are going to do very well. It's just very green still. They're a very green line. And, Droan Dvorak, I am still not sold on Anderson as a uh, – he's terrible defensively. I, I want Gallagher up here. And then Anderson – and actually, what's Hoffman? Hoffman's injured for a long time. Honestly, I'm not a Hoffman fan. I'm not a Jake Evans fan. It's this area here that I'm just not a fan of. Their overall depth is not good. I do like Lekkanen. Would you trade him to somebody who's going to give him more of a shot? Because it just seems like Montreal doesn't want to give this guy the shot he deserves. Um, as far as defense, like I said, without Weber, this uh, this lineup, this defense is pretty meh, I guess. Alexander Romanov could change that a lot. Um, David Savard, I think he was playing hurt last year a lot. If that's the case, this isn't too bad. But he didn't look good all that great all last year. So if that's not the case, and he's already starting to decline at this age, Montreal is in big trouble. Um, Sh- Sherratt is on his uh, his contract year. That, that could be uh, significant for him. He, I'm sure he's going to play well. Don't mind the top three. I don't, I don't, Joel Edmondson up here, no. Sherratt is up there. Edmondson here. I'm just very... Vanilla. I just not. I don't know. It doesn't turn my crank. I'm sorry, Montreal Canadian fans. And then Carey Price has had regular season problems over and over and over again, and he just can't here. Can't. He's got to do what he does in the playoffs in the regular season this year. I don't think Montreal has a lineup for that to happen, and I don't think Jake Allen can hold up this lineup the way he uh, the way they would need a goaltender to do so for them to make it. So. Yeah, I had them lower. And the other thing is is they don't really have all that much to uh, replace players as they get injured. And I watch that a lot when I'm looking at – I look at that a lot on an 82-game schedule. Sammy Niku was horrible in Winnipeg last year. Horrible. So is he going to be better in Montreal? Do they have a magic elixir? Maybe. Xavier Olette has never really been able to hold an NHL spot. Ryan Palin is probably going to be a fourth liner in his career. There's not much here that really makes me go, woo, they're going to be so good if there's injuries. Not at all. I don't see it. Okay, next. We have the Detroit Red Wings was what the community had. And like I said, I think I'd put Detroit now where Montreal is and bring Montreal up a little higher after finding out that Verana is going to be out. Um, I even think that if we did this a now – because I did this two days ago, the community would probably have Detroit lower here without uh, without Verana in. Because you got Robbie, Robbie Fabry is going to be playing on the left wing there. And Robbie Fabry is one of those okay guys. He's going to bounce around the league. Teams that need a little offense, he can do it. He's, he's a decent passer. He's got a good shot. It's really his size that holds him back uh, to being much better than he could be. And he's not a super, super fast skater either. But he's got a killer shot and he's smart. But I don't like him as your number one left winger after Verana leaves. Um, Larkin, again, is just... Bertuzzi will probably be better this year after being having injuries last year. 
Um, Vladimir Nem- Nemeshnikov in your top six is not a good sign. <laughs> He's just horrible defensively, a kind of a puck hog. Um, he does just enough to stay in the NHL. Uh, Pius Suter was a nice pickup from Chicago, but I see why Chicago let him go too. Um, he's fairly slight. He's fairly light for his size. Uh, he's probably hit close to his peak at a 45 point player. Um, he can do a lot of things, but I wouldn't want him on my second line center. And then Philippe Zadina has got to step up huge this year. I do like this. Michael Rasmussen and Joseph Valino. Sam Gagne, get the, put Carter Rowney up there or somebody. Gagne, no. You don't need him in your lineup at all. Uh, but I really like Michael Rasmussen. Six foot six, two twenty one. Uh, can they're going to play him on the wing? I think that's a good idea. Bang some bodies. He puts up some pretty decent offense and isn't a bad skater for his size. Joseph Bellino has been taking his time. They've been working with him. He looks like your classic third line center. Um, there you go, Adam Ernie. Can he play right? Yes. Put him over here. Ernie Bellino Rasmussen. Love that third line. Love it, love it, love it. Keep that. Do that. Bring Sammy, Sam Gagne down here on the fourth line where he can put up some offense against plugs out there in the NHL with Mitchell Stevenson, who is like an energy guy that will just go, 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 and Carter Rowney. Bring some energy to your lineup. Don't mind it at all. But overall, this lineup is, is, is still very, very thin. Uh, Letty, you, I've had arguments with the Detroit boards about Letty. Yes, he had a lot of offense for the New York Islanders last year. And is he going to give you the most offense out of anybody in your lineup? Pro- yes, he will. But he's horrible defensively. Horrible. I believe he's here to help guys like Moritz Sider and Philip Peronic to improve their offense and the power play and then be traded at the deadline. I don't even think Stevie Eiserman really wants this team to be close to a playoff spot this year. Finally, Alex Nedeljkovic. Um, I do not think he's going to put these kind of numbers up in Detroit. I don't. I don't think he's going to put up Bernier numbers that he, Bernier did in Detroit. We'll see if I'm wrong, but I saw holes when he was in Carolina. That system really covered up those holes a lot. Brindamore, assist, Brindamore is brilliant at covering up goaltenders' holes. That's the reason. Did I just say that? That didn't sound good, did it? Brendan Moore is brilliant at covering goaltenders' holes. Okay. Um, that's the reason why Carolina as a whole are don't really worry about their goaltending too much. They're looking for a above-average goaltender, and the system will make them bigger than they are, sort of like Barlamov with the New York Islanders. Uh, Thomas Grice. Uh, like he's, he's living proof of that. He, he He's not a great goaltender, uh, but he can put up decent numbers, and he did put up really good numbers when he was on the island. Uh, however, I don't think that was with Barry, Barry Trot, so I'll shut up. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the whole thing about this year is going to be the youth for, De- for Detroit. Uh, it's going to be about how Philip Horonic progresses, and everybody's excited about Moritz Sider and what he can do finally in the NHL. Um, can Bergen make it? Lucas Raymond, can he make it this year? I don't know. Um, it's not a for sure, that's for sure. It's not a for sure, that's for sure. And, of course, Theodor Niederbach, I know Detroit fans will know who he is, he could be ready this year. So those are the most exciting. Those are the exciting things to see for me in Detroit is just continual progression of that team growing into becoming a championship team. Toronto Maple Leafs come fourth. And uh, by the way, I had, see, I had Buffalo, Montreal, Detroit, Ottawa. I had Ottawa in the wing spot there. I thought they would maybe just barely make it. Now the Leafs. I had the Leafs in the same spot, fourth. Uh, And it's all because of Matthews, you know, Nylander, 
Marner, that that big three, four guys in the in the regular season, those kind of guys can get you there. Just they just will shoot the lights out for you and get you there. Also, I thought they made some pretty astute moves here. Uh, Dubas gets a lot of flack for some of the things he's done, but one thing he uh, the organization did well was picking up Michael Bunting. I don't see him here. I see him up here. I see Mikhaev coming down to here maybe. Uh, I would rather see Kerfoot play center here. Engvall out. David Kampf I think is going to be the fourth line center when it's all said and done. Uh, but I would really like to pick up a bunting. I'm not sure about Richie, but it was worth the shot for the amount of money that they threw at him. And do they not have him in the roster? Yeah, they all they have him as a top line left winger. Wow, he could absolutely crush it. He looked pretty good in Boston last year. I found it odd that they kind of just let him go at two and a half million. Tells me that there might be some things in his lifestyle because Boston is huge on family, team hanging together, clean living, all of those sort of things like that. So watch that with Nick Ritchie, but. 26 points in 56 games is not too bad. And if you're going to throw him in with Matthews and Marner, he could just light it up. Um, so, but my issue really with Toronto is after Riley, Brody, and Muzzin, it's unless Rasmus and Sandin, and I love him, by the way. I think I've been talking about him a lot. When he hits, he's going to be great. It could be this year. To me, with Toronto, it's all about Sandine, to tell you the honest truth. And not many injuries, because if injuries happen, they don't like their depth to be able to cover those injuries up. But I love Rasmus Sandine. I'm not a huge Justin Hole fan. Uh, just, uh, he's not great defensively. He's okay offensively. Um, I think he's a little overrated. They loved him. And they let him, and they kept him over McCann, which I think was a mistake. But we'll see. And then Peter Morazic was the big mistake. That's why they have I have him in fourth. I do not think I don't like Peter Morazic as a goaltender. What often happens, though, and he's twenty nine years old. He has struggled with consistency his whole career. He has always over. Um been over aggressive and over committed is what I'm trying to say. If there was a goaltender coach that could get it in his head to sit back a little bit at certain times, I think he's fantastic. He's got he's big. He's got you know fairly big, 6'1, 190, not huge, but he's got very good reflexes and all that. He just overcommits too often. Uh, but it, it just I can't. Until I see him change, I can't say he's going to, and I think that could be the problem. Uh, it's Jack Campbell is also a big question mark. He crushed it for 10 games, 10 or 15 games. If he can do that again, Toronto's fine. But these are big ifs. He has never did it really consistently through his whole career. And now we're looking at him or Peter Morazic to try to become that goaltender and with if there's injuries there's a problem it's just it's very thin lineup it's a very thin lineup because after that Andre Kasha I don't know if he's going to recover from his injuries it doesn't look like it to me Alex Biega is going to jump in Timothy Lilligren I don't even know if he'll ever play to tell you the honest truth Brennan Manal is so soft soft as butter I Carl Dostro, Dahlstrom, like none of these guys you want in your lineup on a regular basis. Uh, their overall depth is where the real big issue is here. But I do think their they're top six and that huge offense will get them in there. I do think so. Uh, next, third, Boston Bruins. And um, – this would be higher if there wasn't question marks with the second line center position. It'd be cool if Charlie Coyle could actually become what everybody thought he was going to be, that huge power center. Apparently he was injured last year. He Even if he gets in the 40-point range, 
it's looking not too bad. The thing I'm not the thing about it is though, he's not a great shot. And Taylor Hall was a passer guy. I I almost think Eric Halla might be better, but I, I really think they're gonna be looking for another center out there to play with Taylor Hall. They gotta get a shoot first center. A guy like Reinhardt would have been beautiful, but didn't work out. He went to Florida. Uh, something like that. But we'll see. I think this lineup as a whole, though, is still good enough. Of course, you got the big power line. Uh, you'll get points from Hall, Clow, and Smith if they go that direction or whoever plays in the second line center. Maybe Nick Felino give him a shot up there. And uh, with Felino here with Hall, uh, if Jake DeBrus gets his head of his butt, that's, not, that's a really good third line. And uh, I think this is a fantastic fourth line in Trent. Frederick, Thomas Noshik, and Curtis Lazar. So the depth is fine. I'm just really, again, it's been the ongoing problem of depth scoring for Boston. And I, although I think it could be a bit better, it still could use a lot of improvement. And then defense, I do think they're better this year. I think Forbert was a really good pickup. Um, he has worked his bag off to get to, to where he is right now in in LA when he was drafted he couldn't skate very well there was he had holes he was he was slight he's built his weight up to a re, uh, to a good level at 64 and he's learned to play the position fant- really really good like i don't know what his ceiling is i wouldn't be surprised if he ends up playing with McAvoy and crushing it i he's 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 gone over projection in his uh development all the time so i don't i doubt that changes um charlie mcavoy's a beast might get the might get a norris this year um riley and carlo i love that combination that that's fine together and then mac grizzly is back where he should be in that five in the five six spot uh taking advantage of some plugs against other teams fourth lines and stuff to be able to move the puck and playing on a power play. He's kind of a power play specialist at this stage. Um, it is a small 5-6, though. That's a little. Di- that's about the only problem I see here. They might have some difficulties with some of the bruisers that they might be going up against on the other team's fourth line and stuff like that. Uh, Linus Allmark, I still think this was fantastic. Uh he looked great for his last two years in Buffalo. I uh, Buffalo fans now all of a sudden are saying he's not worth the money and all, of course, because he's leaving your team. But uh, I think he's going to work out really well. This could be one of the best combinations. Jeremy Swayman is just oh, unbelievable last year. If he can keep that up for what he looked in 10 games, Boston's looking pretty sweet in goal for quite some time. As far as depth is concerned, Studnik has got to get his chance this year, doesn't he? I don't know where he's gonna, who he's gonna take out. He'll fight with Noshik, I guess. Uh, Bleed always can play when you give him a shot. He's always there. Uh, Zach Sinishin, I don't know. It doesn't look like he's ever gonna pan out, but uh, Jacob Zaboro, like the, 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 they've got guys that can play in that uh, seventh spot where you can fill in. As long as there's not too too many injuries, they're Probably okay. Next, Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, we have Tampa Bay Lightning second. A lot of people had them first, of course. They're a fantastic team still. Uh, the movement that, you know, the players that they had to go out that went out um, in Johnson, uh, of course, uh, doesn't affect this team overly that much as far as I'm concerned. Um, Gord, it's, it's okay. They got guys like Colton Ross and Matthew Joseph to fill those holes. A little weak on the right side with Bogosian and Jan Ruda, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that like Jan Ruda. I, I'm okay. I don't want him playing that many minutes. And he usually doesn't. 16 minutes, 15 minutes is fine. But this is plenty enough to get into the playoffs and do well. Andre Vasilevsky alone. You got you still got the best defenseman in the league, the best goaltender in the league, and the best winger in the league. As long as you got that, you're probably gonna be okay. One of the best two way in point. Sorelli needs to step it up this year. I think he will. 
as long as Steven Stamkos is healthy, and even then, they can fill in the roster. They'll make it no problems. Uh, Cal Foote is still there when he gets healthy. I guess he's four weeks right now. And, uh, you know, Gemmel Smith, they always find guys like Boris Kachuk and Taylor Radish that they develop slowly, and when they come up, they're ready, and they play. And they end up feeding other teams' players with their depth players, like for Hagee in Florida. But anyways, I had them second, too. I, I agreed with the... Uh, I agreed with the community on most of this in the top. Um, finally, the Florida Panthers. Yes, the sexy pick this year. And uh, for good reason, uh, the pickup of Sam Reinhardt to me. Would you please, Sam Bennett, just play on the wing? I know, I know Sam Bennett is one of those guys that he just wants to be a center. It's just been his dream to be a center. And one of the reasons why I left Calgary – was they won't play him in the center. They actually wouldn't play him in the top six. But man, oh man, if Sam Reinhardt played the middle with Huberto, I swear to God he'd get 50 goals. Um, as it is, Reinhardt, Barkoff, and Verhege is pretty darn solid. Huberto, Bennett, and Owen Tippett. I love to see Owen Tippett there. They're going to give him that shot to be what he need, can be. He's got a wicked, wicked shot. So Huberto will be passing to Bennett and Tippett, and that's putting him in the best po possible position he can get be in to uh, to become great, uh, being get, getting passes from Huberto all game. But Trano, loose to Reinen. I think Lundell is injured right now. Yes, how long? Undisclosed. Don't know how long. I think Lundell would probably be taking that spot in, if he wasn't injured. But Ito Lusterine uh, did very well last year. He's never going to be a high offensive guy. But he's a good two-way guy. Um, I wish they could find another spot for Bertrano. I love his shot. I just love it. I don't really like him here in this third line spot. But on this Florida team, you don't have much of a choice. Anyway, solid. Hornquist, Lusterine, or if Lundell is there, woo! I'm pretty sure he's ready. That guy, that kid, he, his skating is not fantastic, but his hockey sense is off the charts. Then Duclair, Joe Thornton, and Achari is like a grab bag of players you kind of throw and just throw them out there and see what happens. I don't think Thornton's going to play all that many minutes. Is he injured? Oh, he's just day-to-day. -day. Okay. But uh, but if that's not the case, I, I still love Lamico. Uh, uh, Zach Delpy can play if you need him to. Hepanimi, he should be getting more of a chance this year. And Gregory Denisenko, like the depth is insane here. As far as the defense is concerned, I, I think Mackenzie Weger this year will solidify himself as the best defenseman they have. You heard it here. Aaron Ekblad. I love he's he, he should be healthy of course he's been uh, he was out a year had a terrible injury last year Gustav Forsley and Radko Gudis is okay I really would rather Radko Gudis here and I'm not a big Nudabara fan nor am I a big Brandon Montour fan I think they're it's serviceable to get them into the playoffs though however I throughout the year I imagine they're going to be looking for somebody to fill it in but they may not have to Matt Kirstead, I love this guy. Uh, he got a cup of coffee last year, and every time I saw him, I thought, that guy is going to be very, very good. And uh, I think he's going to take a roster spot from either Montour or Nudavara, although he's a left defenseman, so probably Montour. I think they might. he might beat out Montour. We'll see. Um, but anyways, we had, that's it. We have them first. That is our Atlantic division. Thanks for being part of this fine programming, everybody. Uh, yeah. Thanks for being part, part of this fine programming. I'll be doing um, – what did we do already? We over, On the broadcast, we did the Central Division yesterday. And today, we're going to be doing – the West? No. The other division. The last division. <laughs> I'm so prepared. That's 
that's what makes my broadcast so good. It's the preparation that I put into everything. Yeah. Um, hit the subscribe button. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace right to your door. Don't tell anybody, okay? I'm doing it just for you. Just for you. Helen, can you stitch yourself up a special Pearls of Wisdom necklace for the for this person that's listening right now? Helen? Helen, she's a, uh, Helen was, uh, I, I met her in the hallway when I first moved into this place and uh, uh, I was just at a rehab at the time and uh, I said, I have no friends and she was like, I'll, I'll be your friend, I guess. And I was like, cool. She's like 90 years old. Anyway, she's here over the time. So she's going to knit you up a Pearls of Wisdom necklace and why don't, she, you know what, she even ground up some fresh pearls today. Some uh, teal, teal pearls. I'm going to throw that into your environment too. Here you go. Pearls, pierce some pearls to your land. <sighs> Freshly ground pearls to your land there. And uh, then I'm going to get Hernandez and Melissa to go over to the Pearlocopter. We're going to deliver that right to your door. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. Bye.